Forminator version 1.24.6 WordPress plugin. Unauthenticated remote command execution. That is as bad as it gets. This exploit was uploaded to the exploit database on July 20th, last updated August 4th. So this has been out there for five weeks. Let's take a look at what WordPress says for this plugin. This plugin is 400,000 active installs. Now our patched version is 1.25. Only 40% of websites are running the patched version. That means a full 60% of the internet of these 400,000 sites is running vulnerable code. And we have actual exploit code here. This is what we're gonna be running today. We're gonna to send this exploit code against seven PHP WordPress firewalls and see which ones can stop this exploit from working. Now, WordFence picked this up on August 29th, so almost a month, about a month after it was initially published. Uh, good job, uh, WordFence, you did finally pick it up. A little late on that one. WordFence is usually a lot faster at pulling in these vulnerabilities. And the firewalls we're gonna be looking at today is Barbecue Firewall, very popular. Black Hole for Bad Bots, also popular. We're gonna be taking a look at Malcare, very popular one, where this is their, uh, we're looking at their ozone layer here. This is their firewall protection, which it says protects against file uploads. We'll see if that works. We're running Ninja Firewall. Uh, this is fully enabled. I think uh, Ninja Firewall's up here somewhere. Uh, we can run, where is it? Ninja Firewall, Firewall Policies. Kick this open. And this is the default configuration. So the only thing we're not running in here is we're not running in Firewall Options. We're not running in the, what is the, what is the option? That's so hard to find everything in here on the dashboard, maybe. Aha! They call it Activate Full WAF Mode. This is basically setting the PHP auto prepend file so that the WAF runs in front of WordPress. Uh, that is not active. Uh, and it's also not active for WordFence because we have about three or four firewalls that all want that and they're not fully compatible. So we're not running that, but that's not really a requirement to block this vulnerability. So these are all default installs. Let's take a look at our exploit code. Here's our vulnerability. Now, whenever someone posts to admin Ajax with an action of, what's our action name here? Forminator submit form custom forms. This code's gonna run. And all it does is it look for a, looks for a file. It's gonna sanitize the file. All this is gonna do is remove any special characters and white space from that file. It's gonna find the upload directory. Then it's gonna get the file name the, of the uploaded file. It's gonna stick that on the end of our uh, upload directory, and then it's gonna write the file to the file system. Now, Forminator does have a check to check that only images are uploaded or uploadable to the server, but this check happens after it already uploaded the file. So that's fail. Um, we're gonna take a look at the exploit code. This is directly from the exploit DB. I just copied it and added in a couple of our form variables that were here. These are our form variables. And that's all we did. It is the exact same exploit code. Let's take a look at that. This exploit code right here is copy and pasted directly from the site. And all we've done is add the form ID, page ID, and the post titles, the action, the nonce, there's only two valid nonces, so that's pretty easy to guess. And we've set our file name here, which is configurable. We're gonna use firewall bypass A for our first test. And we're going to go ahead and upload this exploit. It basically just goes out and fetches another file, which is, this is a two-stage loader. So we'll be uploading stage one, we run stage one, stage one will fetch the rest of the back door and install it, and then we'll execute PHP exploit. That's it, it's pretty simple. We're just uploading a file. There's no checks on here, it just writes it to the file system. Let's go.
And we already have a couple on here from our last run. Let's just go ahead and remove those. And we have a nice clean uploads directory now. There's nothing in there. So let's run our exploit, exploit forminator, uh, and we're going to run it against wordpress.bitfire.co. This is one of my test websites. And let's see which firewalls pick it up. Immediately we get a 403 forbidden. Ninja firewall picked it up. Excellent. Let's see if we can bypass Ninja firewall. Now I know what it's picking up on right here. Ninja firewall is looking at this file extension and it's saying, hey, you're not an admin. You can't upload a PHP file. But we can easily bypass that by adding some special characters. Remember in the vulnerability, it's calling sanitize file. Sanitize file is going to remove all those special characters. So the firewall looks at it, doesn't recognize the special characters, it lets it through. The exploit or the vulnerability removes the special characters and writes it to the file system. So let's see this one go. We've, all we've done is add an underscore and a space here to the end of our extension. Let's upload it and we got something different. Now we've got a word fence block. Now, WordFence isn't blocking because of file extension, although it will. WordFence is blocking because it detects that we're uploading a PHP program. This is also easy to bypass. All we're going to do is upload one megabyte of the letter A in front of it. So we've got our PHP program. It's got one megabyte of A's just in a string. And then we have our exploit code. That's it. And we run it, and the exploit was successfully uploaded. We just bypassed seven firewalls, all with all their rules turned on, and we uploaded a PHP file. There it is right there. Now we're going to go ahead and run that. So let's just copy this guy. We're going to paste him. And now the ex that exploit ran. And now we have a file in here called PHP exploit. All it does is eval a server header or a, a, one of the request headers. And we can come over here, look at our session. And our session target is that file right there, right? If you look at um, uh, this PHP exploit WP content uploads this guy right here, right? That's this guy. So all we have to do is type exploit. Now that that file's on there, and we're connected. Who am I? I'm the dub 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 data user. We can do directory listings. Uh, we can look at an Etsy directory. We can cat Etsy. Cat Etsy password. We can run commands. We are on the server. It's that easy. Now, that's how all the other firewalls handle this vulnerability. Let's see how Bitfire handles this vulnerability. Bitfire actually has three blocking mechanisms that are going to handle this for us. So if we look at the first one, uh, we're only going to enable the first thing here, require full browser. Now require full browser is going to look and see that this, this exploit code right here is exploiting its as we're calling itself Chrome 114, right? But it's obviously not Chrome 114. This is just a little PHP script, right? It's not going to look like Chrome 14. It's going to look completely different. So because Bitfire doesn't recognize this as Chrome, because it says, Hey, this isn't what how Chrome should be acting it's gonna send down a JavaScript verification page. So when we run our exploit, actually let's go ahead and change our file name just so we make sure uh, that we are actually running it. And let's call it. And now we have something completely different. We have all this obfuscated JavaScript. We have some more JavaScript and we have verifying your browser. This is the browser verification page. Bitfire has five different browser verification pages to choose from. Anything from a Cloudflare verifying your browser emulation page to a blank page to any page you want. Um, and this is not shown to most users. Only requests that claim to be web browsers 
and don't actually look like web browsers. So as we can see, Bitfire detected this as a bot, but some websites require Ajax requests and that might be incompatible with our bot check. So for sites that have this mode enabled, which is mostly for sites that have um, a heavy caching, that's gonna be bypassable. We run it and we see our exploit was uploaded and now we have a Bitfire bypass. Okay, let's go ahead and remove that file. That's what you get in the free version, right? Bot blocking. Let's do bypass B, and let's go ahead and enable some more options here. Remember, that's just one of our modes. We still have two more. Let's turn on the WAF. We're gonna turn on block malicious files. Now remember, we had our special file name in here, and we also have our bypass, right? Our word fence bypass. We got our ninja firewall bypass and our word fence bypass. So we've changed pretty much everything. We've dumped a bunch of data and obfuscated our payload, and we've changed the extension. Let's try this. Oh, we got something different this time. This is a block page, halt. Your action file upload was blocked. And what Bitfire is detecting, because Bitfire knows this is a WordPress website and WordPress websites call sanitize file on the file name, Bitfire actually sanitizes this file name before checking the extension. So what Bitfire sees is this PHP extension right here. It doesn't see this at all, okay? That's the first thing. Now, let's say this was a different exploit block malicious files didn't stop it right maybe it was an uploaded file maybe we're writing data from a post variable pulling data from another server any number of things this is what i really want to show you rasp file system protection if you've never seen this this is going to blow you away all we do is check this for our pro customers we're going to turn that on and now we have this x debug break right here before our right before we're going to write the file right and let me show you, just make sure we're gonna remove all these files. Yep, all right, it's completely empty. There's no files in there, right? Okay, let's go ahead and start up our debugger. And we're gonna kick off our exploit code. Oh, I'm gonna go ahead and actually terminate this because I don't want all those background tasks running. We have our debugger running. We're gonna kick this off. Oh, well, let's kick off the exploit code. Not that file, we just deleted it. Kick off the exploit. We're gonna continue. Now this might be a little slow because it's running through seven firewalls. And those seven firewalls, oh, yeah, it looks like we're disconnected. Let's go ahead and turn off some of those firewalls because they really do slow everything down. So we're gonna go back here and we're gonna turn off some of these firewalls. Mostly we need to deactivate WordFence. That is extremely slow. And we wanna deactivate Ninja, not quite as slow. Uh, I don't think Malcare is even looking at any of this data. So we're gonna leave that one on. Re-enable the debugger. Let's kick it off again. And here we go, immediately we get here. Now it looks like, let's take a look at what our variables are file and file data. Here's our file data, it's an HTML file. Look at the file name it's about to write to. Bitfire bypass B, right? Looks like this is about to be executed, but watch what happens when we step into the code. We're no longer in the this post data form. We've now, oh, no, go ahead and kill this one. I'm gonna kill this because we're gonna need a lot of background tasks running. We're constructing a file protection object We'll continue to step in. And now we have an open stream. And look, Bitfire has intercepted the file write. And it sees that the path is a file here. It's a PHP file and it's open for write mode. So it's gonna detect that's a write mode. It's gonna look and say, hey, is this file protected? And it's gonna look to see if that extension contains one of these. Actually, you know what? I'm gonna go ahead and stop this because I wanna step into that. Let's run this again. 
and we're going to single step into this. So here we go. We stepped in and we're in here. We're going to single step into this code. Now it's detected that it's a write file and it's going to look at the path extension that's actually being written, not the special characters. This is what's actually being written to the disk. And we can see here it's a PHP file. Then it's going to check, is the user an admin? And the user is not an admin. They're completely unauthenticated. Yeah, we can skip that. And now we're going to see if the extension contains any one of these restricted extensions, which it does, right? We can see here. We hit in this block and we hit the block now with the PHP file right as being denied. And then we get a couple extra hits. And look, this is the result. The result is halt. Something happened. Your action, PHP file lock, right? Remember, that's exactly what it said when we were looking at the block. That is how powerful the Bitfire Rasp is. We're able to intercept any function call on the system. We can monitor database queries. We can monitor file system access. We can monitor user switches inside WordPress. Uh, it's extremely, extremely powerful. So Bitfire currently is the only uh firewall that is currently blocking the oh we close that window let's go ahead and open it up again is the only uh firewall that's currently blocking this exploit which is currently on over 200,000 websites so i really advise you guys to update your plugins i have a whole bunch of these uh i've got one for every single exploit vulnerability that's been released so far in 2023. I need to do the videos and get the articles written, but I've been keeping up on this. And so far, Bitfire has a 100% block track record. That is how confident I am that Bitfire can protect your website. If you like this video, drop a comment or leave a like on this video. I really appreciate it. Thanks guys so much for watching. I'll see you guys on the next one.